us tonight. Let me start by making some uh, introductions. First off, I'd like to introduce um, uh, the Ortegas. This is Mitchell and his lovely wife. And uh, he is one of our funeral directors at our local uh, Ted Dickey West funeral home. It's right here off of Coit and George Bush. And more importantly, Mitchell has the credit card. He's buying us all dinner tonight. Let's have a round of applause. I'd also like to introduce you to, to my beautiful partner. This is Claudia Molinar. And uh, Claudia and I are uh, pre-need planning advisors. And so uh, we're the ones that uh, you come and talk to and have the conversation that nobody wants to have. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to schedule some times where we'll have some of those conversations and we'll make them as nice as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and close that door. If we get too warm, I'll open it back up. It is a little loud out there. As we walked in at about five o'clock, we found out that uh, the air conditioner in this whole room uh, went down today and they couldn't get someone out fast enough. So I wanna start by just uh, kind of giving you just a little background on myself. And the, that's the question that I get asked almost more than anything else is, how would you ever get in the funeral business? Um, and, you know, I, I will tell you that uh, I'm not a funeral director. I do not have an embalming license. That's Mitchell's job. He can do all that stuff and he's welcome to do it. I, like any good young man growing up, I wanted to follow in my daddy's footsteps. I wanted to be a fireman. And that was my goal. For, for as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a fireman. But I wanted to serve my country first, and so I joined the United States Marine Corps. And we have a Marine with us tonight. We have an Air Force uh, uh, with us tonight. Do we have any more veterans tonight? We're gonna to talk about veterans just a little bit, but the three of us are gonna talk a lot more about veterans and your benefits uh, and what they entitle us because of being in the VA. I went to the Marine Corps and not too long after I got stationed at Camp Pendleton, California, and it was a rough place. I was Oceanside, California, you know, the, the sand and the sun and the water, it was just, it really made it rough, you know, to, to you know, bad circumstances to be part of. <clears throat> but I had an accident with a forklift and I hurt my knee so bad that I had to take uh, an early retirement. I didn't realize it at the time that not only did that end my dream of fi finishing my tour of duty in the Marine Corps, but it also ended my dream of being in the fire department. And I've done many things over the years. I've sold cars, I've uh, sold uh, auto service and tires, I sold windows, replacement windows. I can tell you all about vinyl windows and low E and energy efficient glass. I did kitchen refacing and cabinet refacing uh, and uh, kitchen countertop replacements. A lot of that to support my main job, which I would feel was my ministry. I've been a worship minister. I've been a youth minister. I've been a family life minister. I've been a senior minister and a preaching minister, but I always had that other job. Well, my wife and I took a job at a small church in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, not only did we move to Pennsylvania once, we went to Lebanon and then moved back to San Diego. We moved to Pennsylvania twice when we went to Pottstown. And while I was there, I got hooked up with the Marine Corps League, with the VFW, and with the American Legion. And they found out that I was a preacher and that I would preach the funerals at the gravesite for the servicemen and that I would charge the family and so I got lots of calls. Well, there was one particular uh, cemetery, Limerick Garden of Memories, and I would go there at least twice a week for a veteran, for a veteran uh, funeral. And one time, while we were waiting for all the final uh, events to happen after the family had left and the funeral director had left, I was sitting there with the, the manager of the location. He says, you know, Lee, if you came to work with me, you could actually make money when you come to this place. And I said, really, how, what, what would I do? I mean, 
I was a heavy equipment operator in the Marine Corps. I still know how to use a dozer and a grader, a scoop loader. He said, no, I need a new salesperson to do pre-need cemetery sales. I said, really? We talked about it for a few months and I went to work for him. That was in, that was in 2020. Of course, there was not much going on in our country back in 2020. <clears throat> not. Right in the middle of COVID, I started working. As a matter of fact, Claudia and I started working for Dignity Memorial on the very same day oh, wow. in two different, two different states. states. Uh -huh. I started for Dignity uh, in August of 2020 in Pennsylvania. She started August 20 here, working right here in North Dallas. Well, at the beginning of last year, my wife and I got COVID and we realized we needed to get off of the East Coast and closer to the West Coast. We have a daughter and son-in-law and two grandkids in Houston. We have a son and daughter-in-law and three grandkids in California. And we didn't want to move to California and we didn't want to move to Houston. And we had friends that were here at a church called The Branch, which is right over here in Farmer's Branch in Vista Ridge. Six of them are with us tonight. Uh, some of my friends that I go to church with on a weekly basis. And so I called my friend, who's our senior minister, Chris Seatman. I said, hey, I'm thinking about moving to Texas. What do you think about that? He said, I'd love it. When can you be here? I said, I'll be there next week. We'll talk. And that's what got us here. And I've never been happier. My wife was born and raised in Oak Cliff until she was in seventh grade. And she's ecstatic to be back in Texas. Uh, so I've been living with a Texan my whole life. Now I get to actually be a Texan and live here, and I'm very thankful for that. We're going to talk just for a few moments tonight, and I hope to give you just a, a start of, the, of the, the, what is going to be a journey of pre-planning. Uh, Claudia and I, before the night is over, we're going to sit down and talk to each one of you, and we're going to schedule a time where we can have a more private conversation. We'll have a time later on that we can ask, a, answer some, some general questions. But on the personal side, we want to keep those for our private conversations because we want to uh, protect everybody's privacy as far as that goes. But just like I started and I told my story, pre-planning is a story that is important as well. I'm going to start with this just short little video. It's about two minutes. gift that they're talking about there, I will tell you that, that outside of the foundational roots that, that my wife and I gave our kids growing up, I believe that the, the, the pre-planning of our funerals and taking that off of their plate 
is one of the most caring and loving things that we can do so that they don't have to do it. Um, if you've ever been in a situation where you had to plan a funeral for someone that had not planned, especially if it was a loved one, for a parent or a grandparent, um, there is an awful thing that happens. And I believe that neurologically there's almost a beta blocker that stops the mourning process. It happened to my mother. 1977, my grandfather passed away and he had most of his planning done, but there was still a lot to be done and my grandmother needed to be taken care of because she was away. And with all that was going on, my mother could not focus on mourning and doing what she needed to do. And three months later, she ended up in the hospital. She had a complete and total breakdown. She reverted back to childhood. They said she was acting like she was four years old, asking for her father. My dad, she didn't even know who my dad was or who me and my brother were. My dad had to carry her to the car. We had to get in the car with them at a very young age and we had to go to the hospital. I ended up sleeping on a couch in the, in the waiting room that night. And obviously as a 10 year old child, I had no idea what was going on with my mother. Now I do. It was a form of PTSD in a very different form, but it was a form of PTSD because she hadn't allowed herself to grieve. And it was years before she could get all of the emotion out and do what she needed to do. Because things in life are gonna mess us up. There's a sheet inside of our folders there. And, and I just want us to take just real quick about 30 seconds and look at this form. Of the life's most stressful events, so take that out, talk about that with your significant other there, and I want you to kind of put those. One being the most stressful, five being the least stressful. Guys, I'm gonna give you a hint. Marriage cannot be number one if you want to ride home tonight with your wife. Okay, who wants to take a shot? Number one. We're going to do real quick number one and number five. What do you think number one is? Yes. Okay, what do you think number five is? Any other guesses for number five? Let's take a look at the list. Ding, 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 ding. Death of a spouse or partner, number one. Number two divorce, number three, death of a loved one, number four, personal injury or illness, five, marriage, loss of a job. So six, I forgot there was six, but you did get five. That was pretty good. We plan for so many things in life. We make plans, but when these stressful things happen, what do you do? Who are you gonna call? And don't say Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Who do you who do you know that can help you through this time? Do you know how your partner, he or she, would want this final pathway and road traffic? And where would you start? We protect our family from so many things. We plan things like weddings and college education and retirement. We, we insure ourselves uh, uh, with our cars and uh, against accidents and uh, personal injury. We have medical insurance. We have so many things that we're going to protect our family with by planning and ensuring that these things are taken care of. Doesn't it make sense to plan for the inevitable? 
because planning can protect our loved one from so many different things. We protect our loved ones having to make those most important decisions at a stressful time in life is going to send us down a spiraling pathway that we just don't want to go. We're going to be second guessing our, our loved ones. Did they want this? And did they want this? And I, I tell you, I have literally sat with a funeral director in a room with a family that's not pre-planned and someone would say, oh, mother would love that solid gold casket. That's $27,000. My mom wouldn't want a $27,000 casket. Or, you know what? Mom was so good to us. She deserves. And then fill in the blanks. But when mom chooses the casket that she wants, or mom says, I don't even want a casket at all. I want to be cremated. And sometimes we don't even know what our loved ones want. And then you have someone like Mitchell that has to sit in a room and explain for two and a half hours the difference between a traditional service and a cremation service. And it becomes a totally different ordeal. With the rising costs of everything these days, I don't have to tell you, just go to the gas station and you'll experience it. Or try to get a steak at the grocery store. Funeral costs rise on average of double every 10 years and have for the past 50 years. So doesn't it make sense to plan now? And wouldn't it be nice if you could pay today for services that you're not going to use for 10, 15, 20, 30, or 40 years? Wrote a contract for a 32-year-old and, and his spouse that's 31. They're not planning on using it for 40 or 50 years or longer with the way that we're going these days, but they're gonna get the same services that they would get today then, but they can also add to it. They can change it. And we're gonna talk more about that a little bit later. Is it on? Is it off yet? The, the, uh, <clears throat> There's four things that we wanna to discuss tonight. We wanna to talk about reflecting on our life. We wanna talk about the importance of recording the things that we want in our services and how we're gonna do that. We're gonna talk about this book, which each one of you have an opportunity to get when you meet with Buddy and I. I'm gonna go back to the funeral home tonight and I'm gonna order a copy for each one of you. This is personal. So each spouse is going to get their own copy. We're gonna talk more about that. But then once you, we get this, these plans figured out, we need to talk about securing those plans and what that looks like and then what I really hope that you'll all do is after we've had this time together that you'll share with your friends and your family that you've made these plans. My daughter and my sons know where my pre-planning guide is. In my house, they know how to get to it, and they know if something goes wrong tomorrow, they are supposed to go get this planner, and then they're supposed to go sit down and talk with this young man. Because from that point, he knows what to do. He knows where I want to go, and he knows what to do with me. Because we have a plan, and we're set for it. But how do you want to be remembered? You know, we talk about stories and how important they are. We talk about putting this information down. Everybody says, well, you know, I want Amazing Grace in my funeral. We all love the song Amazing Grace, and but, 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 which Amazing Grace? You know, it was recorded by George Beverly Shea, uh, Tennessee uh, Ernie Ford, uh, Dixie Carter, the Statler Brothers, uh, Elvis Presley. Um, which one do you want? Because the difference between Dixie Carter and Elvis Presley are two totally different songs. Use the same words and the same music. But when we record what we want and how we want to be remembered, what should you, what should your service, what should your funeral, your memorial, do you even want to have a funeral? I know some guys that would like a funeral pyre. Just sit them out on a boat and get that arrow and shoot it off there and light it on fire. If we could do that, I think we'd have a lot of fun. Uh, it's not legal in the state of Texas at this point. 
We can try. We might have to do some other things to get there. But what do you want that service to say about you? Do you want to have your service at a funeral home? Or do you want to have it at your church? Do you want to have your, your, your funeral at, at the beach? Maybe over Lake Ray Hubbard, over by the boat dock, or at a park where you used to spend a lot of time with your kids. The rules have changed about what we have to do. We don't have to sit in a stuffy funeral home chapel anymore. And as a matter of fact, if you want to, you could go and see Mitchell and take a look with one of us at the Ted Dickey Funeral Home and see that we got rid of the carpet on the floor, we got rid of the, the pews, and we put in round tables just like this. So that when we're together and we're remembering someone's life, we're talking about their life story to other friends and family and to our faces, not to the back of someone's head with just a box of Kleenex on the pew with us. But I'm gonna ask the question, how many have made the decision? Cremation? Raise your hand. Traditional casket burial? Interesting, we're about 50-50 with a couple of abstaining votes. Do you know what the ratio in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is? Cremation to traditional? No, it's about 49-51. But here's an interesting thought. If we just travel right up the, the Dallas Tollway to Frisco, to our Stonebriar Funeral Home, which uh, Claudia and I spend a lot of time in as well, we're about 75 to 80% cremation up there. Now, I have a theory about it. If you look, at, and I talked to someone at the Chamber of Commerce for Frisco, there's, there's about only 25% of the Frisco people that live up there that are actually native Texans. Now take those two numbers, and, and I did some math, and I'm thinking, uh, maybe this is why, because we've become a transitory people. And once you find out that if you grew up in, uh, you know, in the, the south part of uh, Detroit, and you want to get your casket shipped from DFW to, to Detroit, Michigan, you're going to pay a few thousand dollars just to get it there, not to mention all the rest of the costs for it, but if you are cremated, it's gonna be a lot cheaper to get it up there. It can even be mailed by the US Postal Service. Do you wanna commemorate your life by a permanent memorial? Um, and there's so many different things that we can show you from beautiful places at, at Sacred Heart Cemetery or Calvary Hill Cemetery, or even uh, just down the 75 here, at Hillcrest and, and North, Northwest Highway at Sparkman Hillcrest, one of the most beautiful cemeteries in all of Dallas. If you've not been there lately, there's some amazing things. But once we reflect on all of this stuff and once we get to this point, we've got to record what we want done. We've got to put those things down. We've got to eliminate the guesswork for our family and we've got to take all of that away so that we can take that stress off of them and we can use our Dignity Memorial Planner and we can put some of those things in it. I just wanna talk just for a few moments about the importance of what's in here and why we use this and why this is important to Mitchell and to our other amazing, amazing funeral directors that are at our 25 funeral homes in the Dallas Metroplex. The very first page, you have important information. You say, what's important about it? This is information that Mitchell is gonna take right off of here and it's gonna go on your death certificate. That's pretty important, wouldn't you say? We've got your legacy page, and the very next page we've got your genealogy page. Well, what can that be used for? There's your obituary. You've already got a halfway start of it, and some people even staple what they once said in their obituary right there. Because every Dignity family is gonna get a beautiful online remembrance of their obituary that's going to stay up permanently forever. It's a lot better than the Dallas Morning News where you get two lines and it's about 650 bucks. We've got service preferences. Do you want cremation? Do you want a traditional burial? Do you want to be buried here? Do you want to be buried at the National Cemetery? I was down there just a couple of weeks ago. I was at the Column Barium uh, up at the top of the hill. And it's a beautiful place if you've not been there, overlooking that lake. 
So I called my wife and I said, she asked what I was doing. And I said, I'm checking out our retirement home. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm reserving us a, 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 a penthouse level condo overlooking the lake. She said, you're what? And I told her where I was. She didn't think it was as funny as I did, but I thought it was pretty funny. But we can put in there the service preferences. I can put who I want to, to preach my funeral. I can put on there who I want to sing what song at my funeral or what song I want played. And Mitchell and the staff at Tadiki can put that to where it plays. I can even put and record all of the pictures in an amazing uh, slideshow presentation that we're going to show. And it's going to run at the service. All of that I can put in here and record ahead of time. If I'm going to have a cemetery plot, do I want to be buried? Or do I want an in-ground burial for my casket? Or do I want a mausoleum and be above ground? Or do I want to be cremated and have my ashes scattered? You know, we have an urn now that is biodegradable. It's made of a sand and gelatin mix. And it's got little sand footprints on the outside of it. It's really cool. You get out in the middle of the water and you say what you want to say about your loved ones and you dump it in the middle and it sits there and floats for a little while and then it just starts to soak up water and then it starts to sink and eventually comes apart and everything does what it's supposed to do all of that can be recorded in exactly what you want in the exact detail that you want people that you want to contact about what's going on uh, did you know that with Dignity Memorial, you can buy travel insurance. It's not a bad deal. For, a, for, for $499, one-time charge, anywhere in the world you travel, if something happens to you, your body, not your cremated ashes, your body is gonna be brought back to your funeral home, the funeral home that you pick. And if you're traveling without your spouse or without your family, that's gonna be very important. Why? Because if they're not with you when you pass, they're going to want to see you and say goodbye one last time. And that's important. We have a note on here of what people to contact, uh, military service, where the will is, what organizations need to be contacted. Are you a member of the VFW? Are you a member of the, the Plano uh, East Chamber of Commerce or the Rotary Club? The, the, who at the church needs to know what's going on? All of that information can be put in the book as we record what's going to go on. For our veterans, just real quickly, if you know a veteran, please send them my way so I can talk to them. I'm a proud Marine. I served in the United States Marine Corps with my brother here. We didn't know we were brothers till tonight. Now we do. But when you and I meet, you're going to get one of these books too. And in the very back page, Here's the form we're gonna fill out. We're gonna put a copy of your DD-214 with it. We're gonna send that to an address in St. Louis. And in about six to eight weeks, you're gonna get a letter back in a nice big envelope. It says, thank you for your service. You are pre-admitted into, into a Veterans National Cemetery. And that is another thing that takes a load off of the family. And it takes a load off of our funeral director because when we take that book in and now it's got the paperwork for our internment, a couple hours of your time just got freed up Absolutely. sometimes or more. Uh, we had one funeral director that was on the phone with Washington DC for four and a half hours one day because of a couple of glitches. They could not find his ED-214. The family couldn't find it and the army could not find it. I think it was an army issue. Sure. Yeah, yeah. of course. If it was Air Force or the Marine Corps, they would have found it right away. The importance of having that and putting those in place. But then we want to talk about securing our the plans that we've made. And we've got a lot of different funding options. We've got a lot of different options to make payments. We have a we have a family cost protection. That, that even pays off your plan if something happens to you while you're making payments on your funeral arrangements. We have cemetery arrangements for people that want to be buried, and at least for this month, and I'm hoping that it continues on to next month, for this month, you can get uh, uh, 60 months, no interest, 
with only 10% down to secure your cemetery arrangements. Buying property now, best property guys that we're ever gonna know. And for a gardener, you're gonna love this. You never have to pay the taxes and you never have to mow the grass or pull the weeds. <laughs> All of this stuff can be secured and taken care of. This is not only going to do everything else, this is going to ease the financial burden. And then someone says, well, I have life insurance. It's going to take care of everything. Is it very convenient for the life insurance to pay the bill? Sometimes it's a week or more until the life insurance funds. My boss tells a story that just absolutely devastates me every single time. And for, for time constraints, and I want to get this real short, but Ann tells an amazing story of a family that she went and met with to pre-plan. They were in their early 30s. He was a farmer, and they, they didn't have a lot of money. They put their plan together, but they did not secure it. And then there was a tractor accident, and she lost her husband. They had a $150,000 insurance policy that was gonna cover everything. But they could not get the funding. And to make a long story short, she had to call her ex-husband and ask for a loan to pay for the funeral and the burial of her current that had just passed. And because she was embarrassed, she needed this much money. But she only asked for this much money. And she was not able to give her husband his final wishes in what she wanted. Once we put our plans in place and once we secure those things, we can be assured that we're going to be set. Insurance is a great thing to have, and our kids are going to love the benefits of it. Right now, if my kids were here, they would give a hearty amen. But I'm going to take care of things for now with money that I've got. I'm going to secure things with today's dollars, not dollars that are going to be 10, 15, 20, 30, whatever years down the road. And then, as I said, we want to share with our loved ones. We want to share with our friends. We want to get the information out of the choices that we've made for our kids, where our planning guides are and where they can find them, and maybe even share a little bit more if they want. Maybe they want to come and see the funeral home where this is going to take place. Did you know that you can get catering as part of your service? One of the biggest, the biggest complaints that I hear from widows and widowers alike Tell me the good things that happened in your service. Tell me the bad things that happened in your service. The number one complaint that I get from folks, on the day of the funeral, I couldn't get people to leave my house. And I just wanted to be alone. Now, we have a beautiful uh, room set up where we can bring in a catered option. And when you want to go home, you can get in the car and leave, and those people can stay and talk longer. When we set up our appointment and we come and we talk, we can meet you guys uh, if you want. We can meet at, the, at one of our locations that's close to your home. We can come to your home and meet. Uh, we can meet at the Starbucks and have a latte or maybe a caramel macchiato. But it's important before we leave tonight, and I want you to look uh, in, our, uh, in your folder, there's a sheet that looks like this. It's called Advanced Planning. And I want you to fill this out. There's a few questions in there as we're waiting for our food to come, which is gonna be brought in in just a very few minutes. I want you to, to, to end by just giving you some reasons why we say dignity is the choice for our services. Number one reason, and not in any given order, but, and these are all in this book that we're gonna order for you guys, the relocation protection that you're guaranteed with dignity, if you decide, hey, we wanna to move to South Florida or Orlando and live close to the mouse, you can take your plan that you purchase here, you can take to a, you can take to a, uh, 
to an, a, a location in Orlando or, My, or Miami, Florida, or San Diego, California, anywhere you wanna go. With 3,200 locations, we're gonna find one. Unless you're gonna go to Kitka, Alaska. They don't have one in Kitka, Alaska. But do, anybody wanna go there? With dignity, you're gonna have the, 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 the privilege of a lifetime of flexibility. I just finished with some folks not too long ago that they planned their cremation services and paid for them 10 years ago. But then they went to, to Ted Dickey West to one of Mitchell's funerals and they saw a beautiful life story. And life story, we started talking about it ahead of time. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about life story when, when we get together at, uh, on our private one-on-one -on -one. But they came in, they looked at Life Story, and one, they wanted Life Story for their own services, and they changed their mind, they wanted an open casket. Well, you can still do that, even though you're gonna be cremated. We have everything set up. You're gonna be, you're gonna have your embalming, you're gonna have your casket, and you're gonna have a beautiful oak, medium stain with this rose gold hardware. It is a gorgeous casket that we use, and it's a, it's a rent casket. All of that can be changed. We can add to that. You can say, you know what, I want this, or I want this, or I want that. And even at the time when you're sitting with Mitchell, you say, you know what, I really never liked that red urn. Can we get the, the pink one? And Mitchell says, you know what, that's no problem. That's in the same price range. We're just going to switch that out for you. Or that one, that one's a little bit more. Uh, I've been at to charge you $50. And you can say, oh, that's worth $50. I'll pay $50. You can make changes. I talked about earlier, we have the purchase protection that your family is going to have. That when you're making payments, if you decide on a payment plan for your funeral services, and heaven forbid something happens to you, your spouse, your family is not going to be burdened with paying that balance off. And you're not going to have to wait for that life insurance policy for 10 or 15 days to come in or longer. I've had it take 30, 60, even 90 days for the insurance to pay off. Dignity is going to cover it immediately. We have a compassion helpline. For 13 months after you lose your spouse, you have an 800 number that you can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And when you roll over in the middle of the night at 3 o'clock in the morning and there's nobody on the pillow next to you, who do you get call? We have someone for you to call. 13 months because we want to make sure that you get past that anniversary. One of the second worst days of your life. And speaking of worst days of your life, that's what we're talking about. And there is no guarantee that Claudia and I and Mitchell can make that day better for you. We're not going to take away the pain. We're not going to take away the grief. But I do guarantee you this. We're going to afford you the opportunity to do what you were meant to do on that day. And as the lady said in our video, show up. Show up and mourn and be supported by your friends and your family. Thank you all for attending. We're gonna be around. Uh, we wanna go ahead and let you start eating as we go with this.